Welcome to Physics One. This is chapter 11, and we're going to be talking about using energy. So this chapter is all about how energy, be, energy can be converted to different forms and also used by biological systems. So when you run or exercise, how much of that energy can you actually use? So how much chemical energy can you turn into useful mechanical energy? So uh, we're going to be using a lot of what we know about chapter 10 to, uh, to calculate the work. And then we're going to see how much energy it takes for a biological entity to do that much work. So biological organisms are only about 25% efficient. That means that for, say, something like a horse, it's 25% energy efficient. So if it can do 750 watts of useful energy, that means that 75% of that uh, is being wasted. So if 75, 750 watts is 25%, then if we quadruple that, that's 100%. So it'd take 300 or 3,000 watts uh, of the horse using energy to be able to output that much useful energy. The rest of it is lost in things like heat. So living organisms lose a lot of energy in the form of heat. So this kangaroo here is probably about 25% efficient. Um, so it takes a certain amount of work for it to jump, but it takes a lot more energy for that process to happen because it's only about 25% energy efficient. So the energy to run, move, and stay warm comes from chem chemical energy in food you eat. So your body can generate a lot of heat, which is what keeps you warm when it's cold. And all of that energy comes from chemical energy. So humans get all of our food, all of our energy from food. We store chemical energy um, in the form of fat. So any energy that you don't use, can part of it gets converted into fat and you can use that energy later. That was an important trait in biology because uh, it allowed us to store food when it was plentiful and use that energy later when we needed it. So when there was lots of food, you could put that energy away from fat, um, and then later you could call that energy up again and use it for something else. Um, in terms of health, this has become a big problem for our society because as food has become more plentiful, human beings tend to have bigger appetites. And so uh, what happens to a lot of people is that your appetite is bigger than the amount of food that you actually use. So even though you feel hungry, uh, you take in much more energy than your body actually needs. And we're going to see that your body does use energy when it's resting. So there is certain amount, a certain amount of energy you use, but the amount of energy that a typical person eats is much more. So uh, if you're trying to lose weight for health reasons, um, the way to do that is first of all, eat healthy, only eat the amount of food that you need, but you also have to exercise. So you have to get rid of that excess energy or reduce the, uh, the number of calories that you take. So it's, it can be a painful balance. Um, and there's also a lot of uh, psychology involved with that too. So with humans, uh, it's, it's not just a simple thing to reduce your uh, calories. You have to do it in a healthy way. So, uh, but let's go on. You learn to calculate how much energy your body requires to complete a range of tasks. So, um, and this energy is something that I think is a big problem because our society is facing an obesity epidemic or also the opposite where uh, people are anorexic or bulimic. So there's a lot of psychology that goes into this whole thing. And I am not a health professional, but. All right. So chapter 11, looking ahead, temperature and heat. Uh, this tea kettle gets hotter because of the transfer of energy from the burner as heat. You'll learn that heat is energy transfer due to a temperature difference between objects. 
So here we have a gas stove and it transfers heat to this kettle of boiling water. And this is an infrared camera. So the first time I really remember this was on the movie Predator. And these predators could see in heat vision, so they could see infrared. Snakes can actually do this. They have, uh, they have normal eyes that work optically, but snakes also have heat sensors. So I don't know what it looks like for a snake, but they can hunt in total darkness by sensing the pre uh, their prey's heat. Now, can they see a tea kettle like this? It's hard to know what a snake actually sees, but they do have temperature sensors and they can find prey. Um, they can find prey in total darkness. Now to get a picture like this, you'd have to have some kind of lens and resolve it. So, but snakes can use infrared to hunt at nighttime. All right, so a heat engine. A heat engine this is a, a device such as a geothermal power plant that transfers thermal energy into useful work. And you'll learn how to calculate the maximum efficiency for converting thermal energy into work. A geothermal energy plant would be something that uses uh, thermal energy from the ground. So maybe a hot springs like a Yellowstone, uh, but you could take this heat and you could use it to uh, basically produce steam. You could boil water and then you could convert that into electricity. Uh, the problem is if you take too much energy, you might, uh, you might stop a geyser in, the, in Yellowstone. So do we want people to build geothermal plants right next to Old Faithful? Uh, maybe not because Old Faithful is cool, but on the other hand, there's a lot of energy there. And as we'll see, uh, whenever we want to produce energy, there's a cost. Uh, and usually uh, there's some kind of impact on the, env on the environment to most types of energy, whether it's producing the fuel, mining the fuel, uh, producing the windmills, getting the metal to produce the windmills. So there's always going to be some kind of impact. Some of those are less and some are more. When we produce solar panels, it takes energy to make the solar panels and you have to get that material. So uh, long-term though, uh, as uh, windmills and solar, solar panels go on, then you start to get into a regime where you are producing a net energy gain just from um, say solar energy. But at first, you, your net energy footprint is negative in the sense that you may have had to have coal to produce that energy. So even though solar panels are, are really great, it does take some energy to, to create that initially. So the cost is, is not free. Um, and in fact, when Hummers first came out, they used to have a commercial that they were actually more energy efficient than a Prius. So even though Hummers got terrible gas mileage, that was true because it takes a lot of energy to make those batteries in a Prius. All right, so looking back the basic energy model, uh, we learned in chapter 10 and emphasized the work mechanical energy. In this chapter, we'll focus on thermal energy, chemical energy, and energy transfer. So we saw that you could change potential energy into kinetic energy. Let's take a look at one of my favorite video games. This is called Energy Skate Park Basic, but this is great because it shows the relationship between kinetic and potential energy. So I'm gonna take my skateboarder and put it right here. And what's gonna, we're gonna see that um, the total energy of the skateboarder remains constant. So when I put my skateboard on the ramp and I place them, let's grab them and put them up here, you see that my total energy, if I go lower, it decreases. If I go higher, my total energy increases. But the amount of energy stored there is all in potential. When I let it go, it becomes kinetic. So I'm gonna slow it down, okay? So right at the bottom here, all of my energy is in the form of kinetic energy then that kinetic energy is going to change to potential energy. And it's gonna go in like that. Up at the top there, all my energy is in the form of potential. So when I go up here, I only have potential energy. Now let's go over here and we're gonna do one with friction, okay? 
So when we add friction, this is going to add thermal energy. And what this is going to tell us is that we can convert that potential and kinetic energy into thermal energy. So as time goes on, uh, we started out with say this much energy. Let's, let's start over here. So in the beginning, all of our energy is in the form of potential. Now we have friction on. And so as the skater starts to move, that thermal energy goes up. And so as the thermal energy goes up, we lose energy from our system. But the total energy remains constant. So our, the total energy doesn't change, but as the thermal energy goes up, then our kinetic and potential are going down. And if at some time here, we added up the total energy loss due to friction, which is thermal energy, our kinetic and potential, that would equal our total energy, okay? So, uh, but uh, in this case, it, this is thermal energy. Now this would also be true if we didn't have any friction. So it could be true if we just had drag. So when a whale is swimming in the water, uh, it's losing energy to drag, and that's going into basically creating turbulence and thermal energy in the water. So as it's swimming, it uh, causes water to get excited. It might heat up, and so it loses energy like that. Um, so let's do it one more time. There we go. Let's switch to uh, no friction. So here in the case where we don't have any friction, we're just converting from straight up from potential to kinetic energy. All right, so work and heat are energy transfers that change the system's total energy. If the system is isolated, the total energy is conserved. So an isolated system would mean something that is cut off from its environment. If it's not an isolated system, then you lose energy to your environment. Okay, so here's our cycle. We can change chemical energy into kinetic energy. So if you're a jogger, uh, you're gonna convert chemical energy into kinetic energy or into potential energy. Uh, batteries store energy uh, in the form of chemical energy. And then when you turn it on, it creates, uh, it creates electricity and you release energy that way. So you cause those electrons to start moving and there's also thermal energy released there. Okay, so chapter 11 preview, stop to think Christina throws a javelin into the air. As she propels it forward from rest, she does 270 joules of work on it. At its highest point, its gravitational potential energy has increased by 70 joules. What is the javelin's kinetic energy at that point? Okay, well, if we ignore uh, wind resistance, it should be uh, 200. So we subtract the uh, 70 uh, from this, okay? So the potential energy has gone up by 70, so she must have thrown it up at an angle. So yeah, so we subtract 70 from 270 and we get 200. All right. A typical efficiency of the human body is what? It's about 25%. That means that 75% of the chemical energy that you use from food is wasted in the form of heat. So humans produce a lot of heat. When you're sitting there, um, you are, you're making heat. Your things are getting hot. Um, all right. So a machine uses 100 joules of electric energy to raise a heavy mass increasing its energy by 300 joules. What is the efficiency of this process? So basically we take 300 divided by 1,000 and that's gonna give us a 30% uh, 30 efficiency. So that means that 700 of that joules went somewhere else, probably heating up the, the crane, um, but it's gone. Maybe friction when it was moving, but that is, that's, that's gone, that energy is lost. So that was a 30% uh, efficient process. And that we get that by, meaning we raise the potential of this object uh, to 300 joules, and so that's useful work. The rest of it is just gone. We don't know what happened to it. It could have gone to the environment. Like I said, the electric motor heats up. If you've ever felt an electric motor, when it's running, it gets hot. That's due to friction, it's also due to 
resistance in the lines. Uh, when electricity flows through a wire, particularly if there is resistance, then it's gonna heat up. And so that energy is lost in the form of thermal energy. Okay, when the temperature of an ideal gas is increased, which of the following also increases? There may be more than one correct answer, okay? So the thermal energy of the gas, yes, that is true. Uh, as we uh, increase the temperature, uh, the gas molecules start moving around, they get hotter. That's thermal energy. So the average kinetic energy of the gas atoms, yes, that is true. Uh, the average potential energy of the gas atoms, not so much. If, there were, if they were ionized and there was an electric field, then we could talk about potential, but that's not really the case. The mass of the gas atoms, mass doesn't change. That is uh, fixed unless they're moving close to the speed of light. Not really. The number of gas atoms, no, no, that is not true. We can't make more atoms by adding electricity, although that would be really cool if we could. We could just turn on a switch, convert electricity into atoms. No, we can't do that. Let's see what the answer is. Yes. So the thermal energy of the gas and the average kinetic energy of the gas atoms. So the gas atoms themselves can absorb heat. If they absorb energy, those electrons go to higher excited states, and also they're flying around faster. So we excite the atoms themselves, but also the gas is uh, moving around. All right, so refrigerator is an example of a reversible process. Hmm, is it reversible? You don't really want it to reverse because if you reverse it, that means all your food gets warm. At least I think, no, so that's not it. A heat pump, uh, yes, uh, probably a heat pump because if you've ever stood next to a refrigerator and you go in the back, uh, it, it's, it's outgassing heat. So heat is coming off somewhere. So behind the refrigerator, if you put your hand back there, it's hot. There's a lot of heat coming off. What's happening is it's taking that thermal energy from inside of the refrigerator and it's putting out that heat into the room. So it is a heat pump, a heat pump. Your air conditioner is the same way. You remove thermal energy, so you take heat from your house and you put it outside. How does that process happen? Well, we'll talk about that later. But yes, it is a heat pump. That's why if you have your door open and the air conditioner is running, not a great idea. You, the heat can just come right back into your house uh, you need to keep that door closed. That's the key to running your air conditioner. Don't put extra strain on there. You also can't cool your house by opening the refrigerator door because what's happening is it's just taking heat out from inside of the refrigerator and putting it into the room. So if you leave the door open, you're literally just taking heat from the outside, putting it out, but then you're also going to be heating up your room because there's a lot of uh, extra heat loss that, that happens when you move that heat. So as you run a heat pump, it's not super efficient. And so the, the, the electric motor or whatever is doing that process is also adding heat to the room. So if you open your refrigerator door, it might be colder inside where your head is if you stick your head in there, but the room temperature is gonna go up. So um, a heat engine, no, it's uh, more like a heat pump. A heat engine is uh, doing work with heat or a hot reserve. So no, it is a heat pump. We're taking heat, we're transferring energy from one area to another. So we're pumping energy out of inside of your refrigerator, putting it in the room. You can't destroy energy, you can only move it somewhere else. So when you get cold, you're sucking that thermal energy out of the refrigerator, putting it into the room. All right. The entropy of an isolated system always increases, always decreases, remains constant, either increases or remains constant, or decreases, remains constant. So we haven't really talked about what entropy is yet, but it's going to either increase or remain constant. You can think of entropy as a, uh, a way of measuring the order or disorder in the system. So you might say, well, if I clean my room, uh, that is going to 
decrease the entropy. Well, this is false. Actually, if you, uh, if you clean your room, you're increasing the entropy in the system. And it, so the higher the entropy, you can think of it, the more chaos there is, the more uh, random movement. So the more, uh, and so what happens when you clean your room, you are putting a lot of energy into the system because to clean your room, your body's expending a lot of energy. That increases the thermal energy. That goes into moving the gas molecules around. Uh, they get excited. You're putting heat into the room. And so the entropy is going up. So you are increasing the entropy by cleaning your room. And if a system is isolated, it either remains constant or it increases. You can't really decrease the entropy unless you're removing heat. Then you can, you can start uh, talking about lowering the entropy of the system. But that heat has to go somewhere else. So entropy is increasing in our universe. All right. Section section eleven point one, transferring uh, energy. All right, so here we go. Uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed. We can change energy into different forms. Uh, we can't get rid of it. Energy can cannot be destroyed in our universe. It's always here. We can change forms. So, for example. Uh, we can have sunlight hitting our solar lamp here. We can store that as chemical energy in our battery here in our solar lamp. So uh, I have one of these uh, for camping and I can put it out in the sun. Uh, it's inflatable and I can set it out there. And if I leave it out for 14 hours, then it will change the energy from the sun into chemical energy which I can convert into electricity and charge up my cell phone partway, which is actually very useful. Then later when I need that energy, I can call it back and I, my lamp comes on, there's a little sensor in there, and or you push the button and it lights up. So I can change the sun's energy into chemical energy and then use it later. Plants also are very good at doing this. They convert solar energy into chemical energy. So they store this in the form of sugars and the plant can keep those there almost uh, indefinitely until say another animal comes along and eats it. Once the, an animal eats that plant, then the energy that was uh, originally from the sun gets converted into chemical energy. So uh, animals take uh, energy from plants which comes from the sun and so in a way, all of the energy that we have here on Earth, even our own energy that we get from eating plants or other animals comes from the sun. So everything we have here is solar energy, unless you use a, something like fossil fuel, which is coal or oil or natural gas. Uh, that energy that hasn't really come from the sun, at least not recently, it may have been trapped there for uh, millions of years ago if uh, oil is produced from uh, fossils, uh, but some people believe that fossil fuels might not actually be from um, fossilized animals or dinosaurs or uh, vegetation. It might actually be produced in a uh, geological process. So it might be from plants that were converted into coal and oil millions of years ago, so that would be uh, really incredible. So if actually, if you think about that, coal is actually one of the most amazing things out there because isn't that, a, it's like the ultimate battery. So millions of years ago, the sun was shining down on the earth. These plants grew and they all died. Uh, they were covered with mud. All the peaceful dinosaurs, they were in a landslide, they died. And then we convert them into coal. So if you think about that, wow, it's like, frozen animals. It's like an evil sorcerer came down, turned them into coal, and now we can burn them and get energy. Wow, it's almost like black magic. <laughs> oh, isn't coal great? <laughs> it's not evil. No, of course it's not evil. <laughs> All right, so transforming energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transformed. So we can convert 
uh, coal into useful electrical energy. Light energy is absorbed by photosynthetic pigments in soybean plants, which use energy to create concentrated chemical energy. And we can burn that energy, make electricity or heat. The soybeans are harvested and their oil is used to make candles. Yes, soy candles. When the candle burns, it, the stored chemical energy is transformed into light energy or thermal energy. Yes. Wind turbine converts translational kinetic energy of moving air into electrical energy. And then we can run a fan miles away. So, um, and the wind, uh, there's an abundant source of wind. Not every place is great for wind energy, but there are some places uh, that are better than others. So one of the challenges is getting the electricity produced by wind energy to the place where you actually want to use it. So even if you have these giant wind farms, you still have to get that energy to the place where you want to use it. So you might have to have those high voltage lines going over your house, but <laughs> yeah, that's very, hey, if you want electricity, you got to get it somehow, right? Okay. So when you walk at a constant speed on level ground, what energy transform transformation is taking place? Well, we're changing. Uh, if you were going up a hill, then you could think about changing chemical energy into potential energy. So that's A, changing uh, chemical energy into potential energy. So maybe you're carrying a heavy book up a hill, then you're just creating potential energy. But if it's level, then you're just moving. So then you're just changing chemical energy into kinetic energy. Oh, no. What, what, when you walk at a constant speed on level ground, what energy transformation is taking place? So I guess it's not kinetic, it's thermal energy. You are, you're creating uh, thermal energy uh, because your body's heating up and um, you are, well, that's true because uh, if your kinetic energy is constant, if you're walking at a constant speed, that was tricky. Oh, they got me on that one. I get it now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you're, if you are, your body is changing chemical energy, you're walking, then you're going to be fighting against friction and wind resistance. And so then you're basically creating thermal energy. Okay. So the work energy equation includes work and energy transfer. We now include electric and radiant energy in the definition of work. Okay, work is positive when energy is transferred. Oh, too much. When energy is transferred into the system and negative when energy is transferred out of the system. When other forms of energy are transformed into thermal energy, the change is irreversible. The energy isn't lost, but it's lost to our use. So in your car, for example, when you're driving, you are uh, changing the gasoline into kinetic energy. You're overcoming or thermal energy if you're traveling at a constant speed. So uh, then uh, the engine in the car is heating up. So you get a lot of thermal energy. You can't really uh, recapture that thermal energy. So it's gone forever. That's not a reversible process. If you carry a heavy weight up a hill and you roll it down again, that process is reversible because you can change potential into kinetic energy, but the thermal energy it took to carry to the top of the hill cannot be uh, recaptured. You can get the potential energy back, but not the potential, not the thermal energy. All right, so efficiency, what you get and what you had to pay. What you get is the actual useful energy that you do. What you had to pay for it is the total chemical energy that it took for you to do that. So if, you, if a horse has to apply uh, 750 joules then uh, for one second, then it took uh, 3,000 joules uh, in order to do that. So uh, efficiency for li living organisms is usually 25% or less. 
I think for blue whales, from what I found in the Journal of Experimental Biology, it's about 15%. So, uh, but I'm not really sure about blue whales. It's very interesting. The larger the energy loss in a system, the lower its efficiency. So as energy is lost, then um, uh, the more you lose energy, the lower the efficiency it is. Reduction in efficiencies can arise from two sources, process limitations, as an energy loss due to practical details. You could make a better design, a more efficient process, or fundamental li limitations cause an energy loss due to physical laws that you cannot circumvent. So sometimes physics dictates that there's a limit to how efficient you can make a process. All right, 35% efficiency is close to the theoretical maximum of power plants due to fundamental limitations. So really, you cannot exceed that. Practically speaking, 25% efficiency is typical of energy used by your body to perform tasks which are larger Largely process limitations due to biochemistry of food metabolism and the biomechanics of movement. So for a living organism, um, when you change that chemical energy into uh, energy your body can use, some of it is released in the form of heat. So thermal energy, your body gets hotter. Um, in a coal plant here, so if you burn coal, all right, then you're losing a lot of the energy here in the form of thermal energy. So burning coal produces 100 joules of thermal energy. Steam with 100 joules of thermal energies enters the turbine. The turbine turns the generator producing 40 joules of electric energy, okay? And then 60 joules of thermal energy is exhausted into the environment, okay? So uh, in the end here, you only get uh, 40 joules of electrical energy, and uh, 60 joules of that was exhausted into the environment. Um, that's just the price of doing business. Um, as this is burning, you want the, the steam to flow this way and then collect here, and so you have to have a cooling process so that this process can be repeated. So um, as you, uh, you, wanna, you want uh, the water to... Um, turn into liquid again over here so it's steam and it goes to the turbine then you have to cool it here uh, if you didn't then the pressure would just go up and up and this thing would explode because uh, steam if you just increase steam the pressure is going to increase and eventually it will it will explode so you've got to cool the steam uh, keep a constant pressure uh, turn the steam back into water and then collect it here and this is usually, this is a closed system. So uh, you need to collect the water here, cool it, and then create steam again, and the process starts over. All right, so. Thank you, like, and subscribe down below.